I was born in Magdeburg in 1982, in what used to be East Germany. Seven years later, Germany, Germany was reunified. And I started as a small child just to begin the small changes happening around me. I used to walk to school along the Arnstrasse. And um, this is a street which is covered with um, old, hundred-year-old buildings, very elegant. You need to know about East Germany's streetscapes, that old buildings have these kind of grey, brownish colour. One day, when I went to school, one of these grey buildings was covered, was hidden behind a scaffolding covered with a canvas. I didn't know what was going on behind it. And it was kind of, I had never had seen a building being renovated before. So, after a few months, the scaffolding was one day gone, revealing a yellow, bright building behind it. In this moment, it was breathtaking for me. It was like somebody had placed the sun in a row of the houses. One by one, each of every building in the street was renovated. And every time I went along the street, I was excited. How might this building end up after they um, revealed it from the scaffolding? This experience of my surroundings changing so dramatically for the better hugely impressed me. I often thought about the workers and the architects um, and the joy they brought not only to me, but to all the people passing by the buildings and living in them. So I decided one day there's my time and there will be my time to be of value for others as well. I dreamed about being a professional uh, of a profession where I inspire others to create something new. And although back then I could not have imagined, imagined that this would literally come true today, I'm an idea coach. After my graduation from the university, I founded my own company. And, as, and like many other founders did, we, our company was based on a technology we developed on our own. It was some kind of cool, super cool methods where you can generate ideas. And as many other founders, uh, we were very proud. We, took very, we were very proud of our invention. And we thought that it made us unique. A few weeks after we conducted the workshop, we contact back our clients and ask them how they are getting along with our ideas, with the ideas they generated with our help. And we heard from our customers that there were somewhere hidden in a drawer, just forgotten. And I could, we, couldn't, we couldn't understand why. We had made a mistake that many founders do, which is fall in love with a thing we can build. For the longest time, we were thinking we were selling ideas. And only slowly it dawned on us that this perspective is very, very limited. For us, our product, this was our product, but for our customers, it was only a means to an end. For companies, ideas are something they use to improve their products, to protect their jobs, or 
to serve their customers better. Ideas have the potential to enable progress and change. And that's what we should have been thinking on and working on. This insight completely changed the view on our company and what we should really be doing. And for the first time, we had the feeling that we will be able to make a real difference in the world. My, my work today brings me into contact with startups who I help to develop their business idea. And I quickly <laughs> experienced and recognized that the mistake I made 10 years ago um, is one that many founders make. So it dawned me, and I thought, so I had to find a way to identify and fix that kind of mistake. Startup founders are almost always technical people, like computer scientists, engineers. And the reason why they found their own company is because they, they came up with, a, with an own invention of themselves and um, thought it might be a good idea. Some app or electronic device. So, in the beginning, they might have a vague idea who might buy, who might buy their product. But they have exactly in mind what their product would look like in the end. If they go ahead and build their product, from their original concept. They are running a huge risk that it will fail because of some unforeseen obstacle. And this obstacle is usually that the customer won't buy it. It is well known that one of the leading causes for startup failure is building a product that nobody wants. The founders may then conclude that this initial setback they experience is a sign that their own idea is bad and give up their project. But if their idea, in fact, is of genuine value, the world is missing out. I believe that if founders have an idea that gets them excited and motivated, this idea has the potential to be of value for others as well. So it would be good for the world to give the idea the opportunity to grow to its fullest and best potential to succeed. On the other hand, founders are usually young, and by that, they have no experience in business and no knowledge about markets and their future customers. This means that they're almost certainly wrong in how they approach and implement the, in the details of their idea. And as we have already seen, um, founders have the tendency to fall in love with, their, with the details of their invention. So, if they go ahead with a naive plan, they are highly likely to fail. and miss an opportunity to pursue something they believe in and earn their living by it. And even worse, the world is missing out because if, they, uh, if the world experienced their, the, the full potential and the full value of idea, they might have had a, a huge amount of progress. Let me give you an example. A few years ago, I supported two very bright founders in the early stages of the startup. Their idea was to find a way to make, it, to make it accessible for parents to reuse children's clothing. 
that this should, should work because children um, outgrow their, their clothes fast. And um, uh, long before they are worn out. So it makes just sense to, you, to make more use of these clothings. Now there are two different ways we could have viewed the startup idea. The normal approach was to say, okay, we are gonna be um, an online second-hand shop where parents save money by acquiring children's clothing. Or we could think of this startup idea as a way in protecting our planet by reducing the water that is used for growing cotton and reducing the use of fertilizer. In the first case, we would have just been considering a business solution. In the latter case, we would have a much bigger vision uh, that was meaningful to the entire world. After a few months, the two founders discovered that the online second-hand shop wasn't economical feasibly because the logistics of acquiring the clothes, the used, already used clothes, washing them, photographing them, and handling them is just too complicated. Now, if the two founders had been fixated to their original solution, as many founders do, their entrepreneurial journey probably would have had ended right there. But in our case, luckily it didn't. We sat down together and we thought of other ways in achieving our goal. And the solution is simple to rent out clothes instead of buying and selling them. This is a much more, and starting in, without uh, renting the clothes, and starting with a set of clothes that the founders bought directly from the manufacturers. That is a much more, much more efficient way in doing things, because the clothing are, are clean, they are already pre-packed and the manufacturers provided the founders with photographs of their products for free. Now, three years later, the founders created um, jobs for 20 people in Magdeburg. And they have thousands of customers. And by that, they were saving a huge amount of fertilizer, pesticides, cotton, and about three million liters of water. So what I have learned from this experience with my own company and from helping startups is this. Founders overestimate the applicability of their initial idea and underestimate the long -term its long-term perspective. So if you have an idea that you're excited about, keep in mind two things. Don't commit yourself to whatever it is that you, that you thought of first, but be flexible in trying to find ways in achieving that. And secondly, take the time to answer this question. Why might our idea has the potential to change the world. And I'm sure and I believe if you follow these two advices that you gain three profits, three benefits from it, you will maximize the chance to be successful, you will enjoy a much deeper motivation of your work, and most of all, the world will obtain the full potential of your idea and your efforts. Thank you very much.